Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to talk about the importance of meaning in memory. And I'm just going to tell you about one study. It was a study conducted by Marcia Johnson, who's now a professor at Yale. And the point of the study is to show that your understanding of some material has a huge impact on your ability to remember that material. If a professor presents information or, you know, an article or a chapter presents information in a way that's difficult to understand, you're going to have a really hard time remembering that material. Now you can't control what a professor or a textbook author is going to do, but you can control what you do. And it turns out if you walk into a lecture unprepared for that lecture, it's really going to hurt you when it comes to studying for the exam. Because as you'll see, one second of preparation for a lecture can double your memory for the content of that lecture. One second. So normally I do this study by, I, I do a version of this study by dividing the class into two halves. This time, you're going to be both halves of the study, but I still think it'll work out in an important way. So first of all, what I'm going to do is simply read you a story and ask you when I'm done reading the story to record, recall as many ideas or sentences as you can from the story. Okay. And I'm not going to give you the title of the story. Here we go. Ready? You're going to have to remember all this. So here we go. The procedure is actually quite simple. First, you arrange items into different groups. Of course, one pile may be sufficient depending on how much there is to do. If you have to go somewhere else due to lack of facilities, that's the next step. Otherwise, you are pretty well set. It's important not to overdo things. That is, it's better to do too few things at once than too many. In the short run, this may not seem important, but complications can easily arise. A mistake can be expensive as well. First, the whole procedure will seem complicated. Soon, however, it will become just another facet of life. It is difficult to foresee any end to the necessity of this task in the immediate future, but then one never can tell. After the procedure is completed, one arranges the material into different groups, then they can be put into their appropriate places. Eventually, they'll be used once more and the whole cycle will have to be repeated. However, this is a part of life. Okay, now write down all of the ideas and sentences that you can remember. And I'll wait. Feel free to hit pause. Not too many, huh? You're not remembering much, are you? Okay. That's what happens when you walk into a lecture cold, when you have not even looked at the headers in the book or the chapter title. But now I'm going to show you the title to that story. Here it is. Boom. Gone. One second. That's all you had. You looked at the title. Now I'm going to read the story to you again. And again, I'm going to ask you to write down as many ideas or sentences from the story as you can remember. So here we go. The procedure is actually quite simple. First, you arrange items into different groups. Of course, one pile may be sufficient depending on how much there is to do. If you have to go somewhere else due to lack of facilities, that is the next step. Otherwise, you're pretty well set. It's important not to overdo things. That is, it's better to do too few things at once than too many. In the short run, this may not seem important, but complications can easily arise. A mistake can be expensive as well. At first, the whole procedure will seem complicated. Soon, however, it will become just another facet of life. It's difficult to foresee any end to the necessity for this task in the immediate future, but then one never can tell. After the procedure is completed, one arranges the materials into different groups. Then they can be put into their appropriate places. Eventually, they'll be used again and the whole cycle will have to be repeated. However, this is a part of life. Now, you could probably write down a whole lot of ideas now, right? That's a one second manipulation. 
Did it have any impact on Marsha Johnson's data? You bet. Students who saw the title of a story for a second before they heard the story remembered more than twice what students who did not see the title of the story remembered after they heard the story. In other words, you invest a second, one second into knowing the topic that's about to be discussed and your memory for the presentation of that topic will more than double. So do not be so stupid as to go into a lecture or to watch an online lecture with no idea what the topic's going to be. Instead, ideally, read the readings before a lecture like you're supposed to. But if you don't do that, then at least spend five minutes, max five minutes, just leafing through the readings, looking at the headers, looking at the title, maybe look at some pictures, look at a graph here or there. And just that knowledge will double your memory for the lecture and therefore cut your study time in half. Invest five minutes before each lecture, cut your study time in half. What's not to love? Okay, that's all I'm going to tell you in this segment. Come on back and I'll give you all sorts of really powerful pointers on how you can study like a pro.